The conceptus development at week 3 and 4 will focus our attention on the bilaminar germ disc, the embryo proper. As a reminder, at day 14, the bilaminar germ disc at this point is comprised of two layers of cells, the epiblast cell layer that is continuous with the amniotic membrane which surrounds the amniotic cavity or the amnion, and the hypoblast cell layer makes up the second layer of that bilaminar germ disc. Hypoblast is continuous with the lining of the yolk sac. So we have the double bubble situation. And to recall, we have this extra embryonic mesoderm that surrounds this double bubble situation and connects it to the chorion. This connecting structure is called the connecting stalk, which is the humble beginning of the umbilical cord. This is where a lot of embryonic blood vessels and their vasculature will start to develop and they will grow into the chorionic plate so that the exchange of nutrients between the maternal blood and the fetal blood can be established. So this is happening as early as day 14 in our embryonic development. A couple of new structures here to note at day 14 is that there are two little indentations on the bilaminar germ disc where the epiblast and hypoblast are tightly sealed together or adhesed together. And these indentations are called the oropharyngeal membrane on the opposite end of where the connecting stalk is and cloacal membrane really close to the connecting stalk. These two membranes are actually the beginnings of the openings into our gut tube. So the oropharyngeal membrane as the name suggests is a thin little membrane that will rupture later on. It is positioned in between the oral cavity and our pharyngeal cavity and the cloacal membrane is a thin membrane that will once again rupture later on that is positioned while you guessed it in the cloaca. We'll talk more about this later. So again, the focus of our discussion in this tutorial is on the epiblast and hypoblast transformation, which is a bilaminar germ disc, aka the embryo proper. So let's start with clean slate, shall we? We'll delete all the extraneous information here and just look at the bilaminar germ disc. Transitioning from day 14 to day 15, something interesting happens in the epiblast cell layer just in front of the cloacal membrane where the epiblast cells form a raised ridge. So let's take a cross section through this longitudinal ridge and see what is happening. On a cross section, here's the epiblast cell layer with the oral pharyngeal membrane way up ahead. Just underneath we have the hypoblast cell layer. This raised ridge that appears around day 15 is happening because of the higher rate of mitosis within the epiblast cells. The increased cell population in this particular area results in cellular crowding causing this elevated ridge to appear. So this elevated ridge of epiblast is called the primitive streak. This is one of the most important important structure that absolutely must form if the embryo is going to start forming. As soon as a primitive streak appears, it also establishes the body axis. The side that has the primitive streak is now dorsal and the layer without is the ventral or the belly side of the embryo. The opposite side of where the primitive streak formed is in the cranial direction and the area that has the primitive streak is going to be the caudal or the tail region of the embryo. And of course, when we have cranial and caudal axis, then we know which side is the right and left sides. Now these directional terminologies, the cranial, caudal, dorsal, and ventral might be new to many of you. This has to do with the consideration of the developing embryos as the quadrupedal organisms as opposed to the bipedal creatures. So considering a dog, for example, here's my Pomeranian Phoebe and there's a cloacal membrane. The directional terminologies, cranial refers to towards the head, caudal refers to towards the tail, ventral towards the belly, and dorsal towards the back. For this little Pomeranian, using anterior could be a little confusing. Are we referring to her head or her belly? Posterior, are we referring to her backside or towards her cloacal membrane? In other words, when I put on a little skirt on my Pomeranian, do I put it on her waist like this or do I put it on her just above all of her four legs? Alright, that's enough of that. Let's turn our attention back to what is happening in the primitive streak. The cells, they continue to divide and 
get crowded. These crowding cells are starting to kind of come together towards the longitudinal midline and start to ingress towards the hypoblast cell layer. So in cross section, we would see a regular looking epiblast cells and crowded epiblast cells in the primitive streak on the one side and here's the other side. It's a cranial portion of that rest of the epiblast cell layer with the oropharyngeal membrane way up ahead. And here's the hypoblast cell layer. And I'm drawing it a little bit separated away from the epiblast cell layer. And there's a reason for that. So here's the rest of the primitive streak, the raised ridge within the epiblast cell layer. And as these cells are coming towards the midline, they start to ingress. And then these cells are starting to get pushed down towards the hypoblast cell layer and creates a central and linear depression along the length of the primitive streak called the primitive roof. And at this point, some of these newly divided daughter cells actually separate away from the epiblast cells and become mesenchymal and become the cells of the connective tissues that are highly migratory. And these migratory cells will start moving towards the cranial end of the embryo in between the epiblast and the hypoblast cell layer. This process of epithelial cells of the epiblast transitioning to become the mesenchymal cells is called the epithelial to mesenchymal transition or EMT. Interestingly, some of the cells that detach from the epiblast cell layer will squeeze themselves into the hypoblast cell layer and displace the hypoblast cells laterally. So much like the conveyor belt, the hypoblast cells will kind of get pushed out towards the yolk sac that they're continuous with. So ultimately, the epiblast cells have now created three different germ cell layers. The epiblast cells that stay on the dorsalmost aspect of the conceptus is going to be the ectodermal layer. And this new mesenchymal layer that formed through the EMT becomes the mesodermal layer. And then lastly, the new layer of cells that replace the hypoblast cell layer is going to be the endodermal layer for the embryo. So this process of forming the three germ cell layers of the embryo from the epiblast is called the gastrulation. And this process really starts between day 14 and 15, so beginning of week 3. As a part of gastrulation, the cranial most end of the primitive streak is a little bit special in that the cells do all ingress towards the middle and the center. Cranial end of the primitive streak has a special name, primitive node. And due to the ingression of cells towards the middle at the circular end, we have a central depression in the center, and that is called the primitive pit. And as a reminder, the longitudinal depression in the middle of the primitive streak itself is called the primitive groove. What's notable about the primitive node is that the cells that ingress from here do not undergo EMT. Instead, the cells remain attached to each other and move towards the cranial end in the midline in the mesodermal layer and this cord of cells that ingressed from the primitive node is called the notochord. The notochord has an incredibly important inducing role. It secretes morphogens that signal the overlying ectoderm to start to thicken. Let's see what that looks like in cross section in this area. We're cranial to the primitive streak. Here's the ectodermal layer, the hypo blast cell layer underneath and here's the nodal cord that has stayed as a cord of cells that stays as a rigid rod of epithelial tissue that travels in the mesodermal layer along the midline towards but not past the oropharyngeal membrane. On either side of the nodal cord, there are migrating mesodermal cells that have been produced from the primitive streak positioned caudally. So here's a nodal cord embedded within the mesodermal layer. And just above the nodal cord, the ectodermal cells have been induced to thicken. So we have taller cells here which causes this portion of the ectoderm to thicken and appear as a raised 
plate. For this reason, the raised portion of the ectoderm here is called the neural plate because you guessed it. This is what will give rise to the neural tissue and this thickened portion of the ectoderm is now called the neuroectoderm. This occurs around day 15 post-fertilization and this process of the neural plate formation as soon as the nodal cord starts to appear from the primitive node marks the beginning of the neural system development called the neurulation. So the beginning of two very important processes in embryonic development occurs at the beginning of week three. That is the gastrulation where the three germ cell layers start to get laid down and the neurulation to make our nervous system.